What's going on guys? In this video we are going to be experimenting with ImageNet models in PyTorch. So in the last video we went over how to load data and a little bit about pre-processing and now in this video what we're going to do is we're going to use these ImageNet models and feed in images that it hasn't seen and see how well these ImageNet models have generalized. All right, so let's just go over some terminology and first we'll talk about what ImageNet models are. So ImageNet models are models that have been trained on the ImageNet dataset. So the ImageNet dataset is a huge collection of images, but for this particular case, I think they only used 1 million images out of that huge dataset and used a thousand different categories. So ImageNet was hosting a competition every year called the ImageNet competition, and lots of big companies were participating in it such as Google, Microsoft, and I think Facebook as well. So they participate in this competition and the winners of the competition usually open source the model architecture as well as the weights. Weights meaning the trained model itself. So this competition was going on every year, but I think it stopped last year because some of these models were getting too good and they need a, a different data set. So these ImageNet models are basically models that participated in that competition or they've just been trained on that same subset, a million images in a thousand categories. So even after the competition stopped, uh, researchers have continued to work or have continued to train models on this ImageNet dataset. And a lot of these trained models are open sourced ImageNet models. So that's why PyTorch actually has a collection of these ImageNet models. So what we're going to do is we're going to access a couple of them and then we will download a couple of images I actually did. I already downloaded a couple of images and we'll see how these models do on images it hasn't seen. So this is uh, known as inference. So basically you have your training portion where you're training the model on a set of images and you have your validation set where you're continuously testing how well your model is generalizing. And then after you have your model, you want to be able to deploy it and use it for real world problems. So in this case, we're going to see how well this uh, model is going to classify images that it hasn't seen. And this process of using your model to try to classify images that it hasn't seen is known as inference. So with that terminology under our belt, let's take a look at the code and get started. So the first thing I did was I actually got a JSON file, I downloaded it, and this JSON file contains all of the labels. So remember I said there's a thousand classes these ImageNet models can classify, so this JSON file has all of those labels. So what we're going to do is open the JSON file and save it to the labels variable. Now we're going to look at the length of labels.keys and it should be a thousand because the ImageNet dataset that these models were trained on have a thousand labels. So a thousand labels. And now we're going to look at the first five of the keys, which is just zero, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to look at the values. So each key represents the label number and the values are going to represent the label names. So we have a tench, a goldfish, great white shark, tiger shark, hammerhead. So these are the first five values. Let's take a look at the last five values. All right, so we have earth star, hen of the woods, bolit, I'm not sure I pronounced that, tear, toilet tissue. I'm assuming that's tissue paper. Anyway, so these are the labels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import from Torch Vision the models. So models consist of all of the computer vision models that PyTorch comes with. All right, so we're going to import models and we're going to import Torch. So now we can look at most of the default models that come with Torch Vision. So if I run this, you'll see AlexNet, DenseNet, Inception, and then each of the DenseNet has actually a number accompanying it and these numbers represent the number of layers and as you can see there's a quite a few image models but there's actually a lot more and more and more models are coming out every year so this is just a, a very small subset of all the different models that have come out the past few years and you'll notice these first four or five AlexNet, DenseNet, Inception are capitalized and sort of different from these these are the most popular implementation of these so when you see DenseNet, you'll look at the most popular implementation of DenseNet. Uh, Inception 3 will be the most popular uh, implementation of Inception. Same with ResNet. 
squeeze in, etc. So this is just to make it easier, just in case you're very new to deep learning and you don't know which model to choose, having all these could be confusing. So what Facebook or the people of PyTorch did is they picked the most popular implementations and they called it DenseNet, AlexNet, etc. All right, so these are the models and we're going to go with ResNet 18. So ResNet 18 was only trained on 18 layers. And the way we initialize it is ResNet 18, just like this. Now, this is going to be a random initialized weights. So basically, it's not going to use the ImageNet weights that it was trained on. And we want the ImageNet weights. So with PyTorch, what you can do is you can call the model and just get the architecture without the weights. So basically, you, you'll be starting from scratch. And this is if you want to train your model on a data set from scratch. And the other thing you can do is you can set pre-trained equals true. That means it's going to use the weights that it learned from training on the ImageNet dataset. So this first version, models 18 without the pre-train, is just the model architecture and the weights are initialized randomly from scratch, basically. So it's just basically taking the model, but acting as if it wasn't trained on ImageNet and starting from scratch. And the bottom one, it's um, actually taking the model with the weights after it was trained on ImageNet. So we'll be working with the second one because we want to see how the ImageNet models do on uh, images it hasn't seen, which is inference. All right, so now, of course, what we need to do is we need to set our pre-processing or set up our pre-processing. We went over this in the last video. The ResNet models, they are mostly trained on 224, 224. So that's what we will resize our models to. Then we have transfer to tensor, uh, trans transform to dot normalize. Now, some of these models, I think most of them were trained on center crop as well. So the way they were resized was they were first center cropped and then they were resized. And for now, I guess we'll just skip that. And during transfer learning, maybe I'll, I'll use that as well, the center crop portion. I forgot to include that, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. So these are the transforms. We went over this in the last video and I'll just run this. Oops, actually I need to run this above cell. Okay, now we will run this and get the transforms ready. All right, so now we will use three different images. I have a horse, a duck, and a cat. So these are three images I randomly downloaded from the net, and we will look at each of the images. So I use pill to open these images, and we have a horse, a duck, and a cat. All right, so now we're going to pre-process these images, and we're just using the uh, pre-process function that we created earlier, and now, after running this, we will have three pre-processed images. And if you look at the type, now they're type tensors. The shape is the channels first, and then the height and width. So the next thing we need to do is unsqueeze. Basically, all of these images need to be in four dimensions because the first dimension will represent batch. So all of these models are expecting images to be passed in as batches. So so currently, if you look at uh, torch.size, you'll see it's channel, height, and width. By using unsqueeze image at the zeroth offset, so basically this is uh, the first index, second, third. So if we unsqueeze at the zeroth offset, so here you'll see 0, 1, 2. We want to unsqueeze at the zero, meaning add an extra dimension. If we run this, that's exactly what it'll do. All right, so as you can see, now we've added an extra dimension at the uh, zeroth offset. So now we have batches, channel, height and width. So this is the sort of dimension or the shape that your images need to be in. All right, so the next thing we'll do, and this is a very important step, is you need to set your model to the eval mode. So there's a training mode and eval mode. And in training mode, your model will behave a little differently than in eval mode. So whenever you're using inference, which is not trained, but to test your model on images, always remember to set your model to the eval mode. Now with that said, what we're going to do is run the model on each of the images and we get back probabilities. So we run that and that's all done now and we'll look at the shape. So you'll see uh, probs.shape is just the first line. You get back a torch that's of size one and a thousand. So we have a thousand probabilities all adding up to one. So basically that's how these models work. They give you a probability of each of the labels and the highest probability is usually associated with what the model thought that image was. So what we'll do now is we're going to run torch.max on the probabilities. And this one is just representing the first dimension, which is uh, this thousand here. 
not the zero dimension, but the one, the first dimension. So we want to get the max out of the a thousand different labels. So we get back a value and an index. So the value is going to represent the value and the index is going to represent the index of the thousand by different categories. So now what we're going to do is just print it out. So to print the index first, we have to convert it from torch to numpy. So right now it's a, a tensor, which only PyTorch understands, but to be able to print out the actual value, we need to convert it to a NumPy. So we'll do that, we'll convert it to NumPy, and then we'll convert it into an int, but basically these are the values, 463, 463. Now that's a little strange. I don't know why we're getting the same number. Let's see, image one, image two, image three. Yeah, we're getting the same label back for two different images. Not sure why that's the case, but let's see. We'll run this. Okay, so let's go back up and let's see. I must have missed. I'm calling the pre-trained version. All right, so I forgot to convert the model to eval. All right, so as you can see, there's a huge difference if I don't convert the model to eval mode. But here we go. So we have 351 and 146. So the, basically the model is thinking that the first image is, is labeled 351 and the second image is labeled 146. Now earlier these were all buckets, but if I run this now, you'll see it thinks the, the first image is a hardabest, hardabest. The second image is an albatross and the third image is a Persian cat. So these labels are very detailed. It's not just a cat, it thinks it's a Persian cat. And it seems to be correct. I don't know what the first one is. Hardabest. Hardabest? Let's see. So it's a, it looks like an antelope. So the second one is an albatross, which is sort of a duck type thing. Let's see. Yeah, so it's a large seabird uh, related to the, I don't know how to pronounce that, but basically, all right. So you got the second one right, and the third one, the Persian cat. So this model got this one completely wrong, got the second one right, and got the third one correct. All right, so not only that, what we can do is we can look at the top five probabilities. So right now we're looking at the max probability, which is just the first value, what it's the surest of. Now let's take a look at the top five and what it thinks is the, what are the top five choices. So the first choice was hard and best for the first image, but let's look at the first five choices for the first image, which is props, props. If I run this, we get top K. So it returns five different uh, indices, and what I'm going to do is, as you can see, these are the indices. We're going to basically just run these couple of lines, which is, so first let's look at the shape. It's a NumPy array, so we're going to squeeze it to basically get rid of the five, the one, so this will be torch size 5, so it will basically turn into a list. The squeeze is just turning into a list instead of an array. And then we convert it to a NumPy list array. So as you can see, it's a one-dimensional instead of here being two-dimensional. And then we're just going to iterate through it. These last few lines are basically just converting it in a format that's easy to iterate through. And we're going to iterate and look at the labels. So we have a Hardabest, Sorel, Arabian, Camel, Impala, and Vizsla. So I am not sure what this is. Let's look at this. So this seems like some kind of plant, which is a huge uh, mistake. Number three is a camel, which I can see the horse sort of could look like a camel. Impala, I'm not sure what these are. So these are the fi first five choices, with the first choice being a hard hardabest. All right, so that was a, a small model. Let's go back up here. So that was one of the models, which is trained on only 18 layers. So let's try a larger model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the name the same because we're using this uh, ResNet 18 model throughout these cells, but I'm going to assign it to a different model, uh, ResNet 101. So this ResNet 101 actually was trained on 101 images. So let's see if this does any better. So this is actually a more accurate model. Okay. I guess I have to download the image, uh, download the model first. Okay, so the model has been downloaded. Let me just run that again, just in case. Okay, so we will 
I guess we don't really need to do this, but I'll just run through all these. Oops. That's a strange error. Okay. I don't know why that error came, but basically, we converted into a tensor, and this is just pre processing. All right, now we're just going to run it into eval mode. Remember, this is the 150 layer, 101 layer, yeah, 101 layer ResNet model. It's just named ResNet 18. So we'll run this, run this. All right, so you see it took a little longer because the models are bigger. All right, surprisingly, it gives out the same value, except for the last one. It's a tabby. So first of all, let's look at what a tabby is. All right, so this actually looks more realistic than a Persian cat. Yeah, so Pers it does not look like a Persian cat. It actually looks like a tabby. So this is this has gotten a little more accurate. But the first one is still a hardy beast or harder best. Now let's look at the top five and see if anything has changed. All right, run this. All right, so now some of them have changed. It's still Soral for number two. Vizsla has moved to number three, which is, I guess, the same color, but it's a dog. This is a hound, and I'm not sure what a Rhodesian Ridgeback is. Yeah, so I guess it's, it's basing it on the same color. So, yeah, so it's not perfect, but so there are other models that actually have a higher uh, training percentage compared to the ones we've been working with. So we've only looked at ResNet and ResNet uh, 150. And actually, I could just throw in, let me see, maybe DenseNet 201. All right, what I'll do is actually, so I'll also use a, a DenseNet. Let's see. 201. So let's try a DenseNet 201. So this should be all pre-processed, so we shouldn't worry about any of this, but yeah, I guess I'll just run it just in case. We don't need this. We'll pre-process them. All right. So once again, this should be DenseNet. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's DenseNet. All right, so we will run this. Now we'll get the probs. You'll see this is taking longer. Probability shape. All right. So now you, you'll see it's completely different, the, in, uh, the index or the indices. And if we run this, you'll see a sorrel, a goose, and an Egyptian cat. All right. All right. So a sorrel, hartebeest, Arabian camel. So very similar, both of these models. And I am not sure why they think it's a sorrel. I know there's a horse category or label. I'm pretty sure there is uh, within the image net, or maybe there isn't. I haven't looked through all of the thousand labels, but this seems to be a plant. Sorrel is a common sorrel, a garden sorrel often, so we call it as a perennial herb or herb. All right. All right, so that was just a, a quick introduction to inference, or basically the exploration of image net models in PyTorch. Now, what I'm going to do in the next video is we're going to be using these on our personal data sets. So they've been trained actually on the thousand categories and they have these weights based on the thousand categories. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is something called transfer learning. So what transfer learning is, so instead of training from scratch, we're going to be using the weights that it trained or that it learned from the ImageNet models. So if our data, say, deals with some sort of animals, the model should be able to learn quicker because the the first X amount of layers should have picked up some of the features that are needed to classify animals. So with transfer learning, what we do is basically we're using a trained model and we are trying to save time by not training from scratch, but using the weights of a trained model. And in this case, this trained model would be trained on the thousand categories of ImageNet. So that's what transfer learning does. We basically take that and we apply it to our data set. So what we need to do is we're going to chop off the last layer, which is for a thousand labels, and we're going to apply it to the data set we worked through in the first video, which was the ants and the bees. So we're going to create our last layer to only classify two labels instead of the thousand labels. All right, so that's it with this video. I will see you guys in the next video.